This is a quick tour of Oracle Spatial Studio. Spatial Studio makes it easy for you to create interactive maps and perform spatial analysis on your data. In this demo, I'm going to go through four basic steps. I'm going to show you how to get your data into Studio, how to prepare your data, how to create a project, visualize and perform spatial analysis on your data, and publish your results. Let's begin by looking at the UI. On the left is a navigation bar where you can access the main pages of Studio. When you log in, you'll be on the Projects page, which lists all your current projects. A project is your workspace so you can pull in different data sets that you have and create analyses and one or more visualizations. You can have two different types of projects. Active projects are the ones you're currently working on and that you can save and reopen to work on at a later time. Published projects are projects you want to share with others. They are interactive views of projects that cannot be edited except for the way they look. Under Projects is a data page. Here we have connections to database tables so we can create data sets to use in our projects. Active Project is the actual canvas that we use to create our projects. Jobs enables you to see the status of certain activities that run in the background. On the right is the Create button that is on all the main pages in Studio. It allows you to create essential artifacts of this application. The first thing you do is create a data set for a project that you want to start working on. You can create data sets from a connection or a file. Connections are what you use to load data from database tables stored in your database schemas into Studio. These can be standard database tables that may have some location attribute or tables that already include geometry data types. There's one connection that has already been created. You can create additional connections as well. When you are creating a new connection to load data from your existing schema, your schema can be residing in an on-premise database or it can be an autonomous database cloud service. I already have the data I need from a database, so I'll be creating a data set from a file. You can upload three types of files from your local file system to create data sets. You can upload shape files, which are on one of the popular formats for exchanging geospatial data. You can upload GeoJSON files, you can also upload a spreadsheet that typically has addresses that you can geocode and turn into geometries or points. This is what I'm going to do now. I'll go through a workflow to demonstrate some of Studio's capabilities. As I said previously, the first thing I will do is create a data set for a new project I want to start working on. I'm going to upload a spreadsheet that I get from the State of California website into Studio. The spreadsheet has all the schools in Northern California. I can name it anything I want. These are the columns that will be in my data set. Once I submit, Studio uploads it. Here are all the data sets I have in Studio and the school spreadsheet that I just uploaded. You'll notice there's a table icon and a yellow symbol telling me that I need to do some work with this data set so I can see it in a map or do any spatial analysis. Since this data set doesn't include a spatial geometry, it needs to be geocoded. I'll stop preparing the data by geocoding the addresses. Studio introspects the data by looking through the values of the columns, figuring out which ones can be used for address geocoding, and then tagging them. I can verify or adjust the geo attributes to be used to geocode. Studio has selected street, city, county, zip code, and state. And since all my data is located in the United States, I'll add that so the geocoder works more efficiently. Once I apply, the geocoding process begins. A cloud-based geocoder is included with Spatial Studio. Studio shows me progress while it's geocoding these addresses. I can also go to the Jobs panel to see progress. 
It might take a bit of time if there are a lot of addresses that geocode. But this job doesn't have many addresses of geocode, so it finishes, finishes the job fairly quickly. If I want to see what addresses matched, what was ambiguous, and what didn't match at all, I can go back and view that information and also make corrections to improve the matches. Since I have a substantial number of matches, I'll just accept them as they are. Now when you see the data set, the yellow symbol is gone and the pen is there telling me this data set is ready to use in a project. Next, I'll create a project, which I can do here from a Northern California Schools dataset. Now I'm in my active project canvas. Studio supports two types of visualizations, a table view of your dataset and a map view of your dataset. And in the future, we'll be adding more visualization types. The Northern California Schools dataset is already there. I want to see the schools on a map, so I add the schools dataset to the map. I can go into settings to change how this layer looks on the map. I'll change the color a bit to make it more muted. We call a data set a layer when we put it on a map because the layer includes the data set and other information necessary for representation on the map. In order to do any spatial analysis, I'll add another data set to my project. I've already created a data set from a shapefile that I also got from the State of California website. This data set includes major fire zones in Northern California in 2017 and 2018. It's already prepared for mapping and spatial analysis. I'll add this data set to my map. For my spatial analysis, I want to find out which schools are within two miles of the major fire zones. Open the dialog and choose spatial analysis. I have a page with all the spatial analysis operations available. These operators run in the database. They are organized into categories to make them easier to find. The categories include filtering, combining, transforming, and measuring. I want to do a filter operation. I want to find out which school is within a distance of two miles of the major fire zones. When I pick within distance, I get a dialog that guides me through the parameters of the spatial operation. Studio gives it a default analysis name, which I can change if I want. I'll just keep it the same. Geometry 1 is in Northern California schools. For Geometry 2, I'll pick the major fire zones and I'll put in two miles. I say run, and Studio starts creating a spatial analysis. Here's a new analysis that's been created. I can view it on the map just like any other data set. I'll add this analysis data set to the map. I'll change the color of the circles to blue. I'll also create a tooltip to show the names of the schools 
that are within two miles of the fire zones when you mouse over them. I'll also change the location of the map legend so it isn't so close to the schools and fire zones. I'll add a table of visualization to my canvas and I'll add the schools that are within two miles of the fire zone. As you can see, I can click back and forth between the two types of visualizations. I can also add more maps if I wanted. I can look at the properties of this analysis data set. I can see things like data set ID, data source, database, it's also GeoJSON endpoint. If you want to display this data set in a different application, you can get the GeoJSON data out of the database using this endpoint. You can also see the columns that exist in this table. And there's the SDO geometry data type. So this is just one example of a simple spatial analysis you can do. Next, I'll save the project. Northern California Schools and Fire Zones. Then I'll share it. I'll go back to the home page. I'll see it listed under active projects and published projects. As I said, published projects is an interactive view of my project that cannot be edited except the way it looks. If you're using Oracle Data Visualization, you can export the data analysis data set as a CSV or GeoJSON file. You go to your data page, export the data set, then you can choose the columns you want included with your CSV or GeoJSON file. That was a quick overview doing spatial visualization and analysis. I showed you how to get your data into Studio, prepare your data, create a project, perform spatial analysis, and publish your results. This concludes the introduction to Oracle Spatial Studio.